Hello everyone, this is a continuation of our review for exam 3. Um, this is part 3, and we left off with this initial value problem. So, that was the page of notes from last time. And now we're up to variation of parameters. So, regarding variation of parameters, um, we have our f special formula that is on our crib notes um, and it talks about the non-homogeneous equation and first find its complementary function and then here's the formula for the particular solution where the y1 and the y2 are coming from your complementary function and the round scan is um, the round scan of those functions and so we'll see how to handle those again and so the first thing to do is to find the y1 and y2, which are the solutions to the homogeneous. So we form the associated homogeneous. y double prime plus y is 0. The characteristic equation, r squared plus 1 is 0. I'll isolate the r squared, it's negative 1, so r is plus or minus square root of negative 1, or plus or minus i. So then that will give us our complementary function, i sub c. Okay, formally it's e to the 0x, because complex conjugate pairs, e to the ax, c1, cosine bx and then plus c2 sine of bx but b is 1 that's the coefficient of i so c1 cosine x and then plus c2 sine of x but of course there's no need for the e to the 0x so y sub c is c1 cosine x plus c2 sine of x. Okay, I'm going to move up here. And so, in accordance with the theorem, this is of the form c1 y1 plus c2 y2. So we take y1 to be the cosine of x and y2 to be the sine of x. And then we need the round skin of that. So we set it up. First row, cosine x, sine x. Second row, their derivatives, minus sine x, cosine x. Just be careful if there were two or three in there, this would be minus three. Let's say there were three, it'd be minus three sine three x. And then if there's a three in here, this would be three cosine three x. We'll actually see that come into play in the next example because so I want to do two of these with you um, and here calculating the determinant we get cosine squared plus sine squared which we know of course by our identity is 1 okay so then it's just a matter of plugging into the formula so once you get the y1 y2 and the round skin I sub p look at your cheat sheet if you have to Again, there's the formula for the variation of parameters. So I'll recopy it within the context of our solution here. So we have minus y1 integral y2 f over w with respect to x and then plus y2 integral y1 f over w with respect to x. So therefore y sub p is minus y1 was cosine of x integral y2 sine of x times the function f and remember the function is the function that the differential equation is equal to so that's f of x or f so that's secant tangent, secant x, tangent x. 
Again, it's not over one with respect to X. And then, because Ron's getting one again. And then we have plus Y2, sine of X, integral Y1, that was cosine X, times, again, the function is our secant X, tangent X. That's all over the round scan of 1 again with respect to X. All right, before we do the integrations, let's just, um, well, actually, let me just rewrite everything and then talk about this. Okay, so I've got everything rewritten now. And now we have to concern ourselves with the integrals. And what often happens is that we're going to have these trig, a lot of times if we have trig functions involved, like in this example, we're going to have to use trig identities to fit an integrable form because neither of these are readily integrable. And one thing that we could always do to try to simplify uh, trigonometric functions is change everything to sines and cosines. <clears throat> so I'm going to leave this as sine of x. I'm going to write it over 1. Secant of x we know is the reciprocal of cosine. So that's 1 over cosine by re our reciprocal identity. And then by the quotient identity, tangent of x is sine x over cosine x. And that's all with respect to x. All right, so let me do the same thing to the second integral. All right, this is cosine x over 1 secant, again, 1 over cosine x. And right at that point, I'm thinking to myself, well, there's really no need to change the tangent because these cosines are going to cancel. So I'm going to leave this as tangent of x. And then we'll consider what to do with the first integral. And with the first integral, there's no cancellations or anything. Um, so the best we could do is maybe make this sine squared, sine times sine, sine squared x over cosine squared x. And then this will just become the integral that is cosines will cancel, and it becomes tangent of x which we should know how to integrate. But before we integrate, let's still clean up this first integral. Sine over cosine is tangent, so this would be tangent squared x. And tangent squared is not readily integrable, so what we're going to have to do with that is actually change that by the Pythagorean identity. We know that the identity is that 1 plus tangent squared theta is secant squared theta. So therefore tangent squared is secant squared of x minus 1. And now we're ready to integrate. Oops, let me clean this up. Sorry, I didn't make a mistake there. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that was plus sine of x times the integral of tangent of x with respect to x. Okay, so the minus cosine of x, integrating secant squared, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so secant squared integrates to be tangent of x, minus integrating 1 with respect to x, we get x, and then we have plus the sine of x, and integrating the tangent of x, well, that's why I included these, what I call, useful formulas on our cheat sheet. 
typically you will have to use one of these at least and for tangent it's minus natural log absolute value of cosine <clears throat> so we get minus natural log absolute value of cosine x and we could pretty much just leave it in that form I'll just make it look a little better and make this minus sine of x times the natural log absolute value of cosine x. Okay, so I've got one more variation of parameters because I just want to make sure you, you know, go back and look at the notes and everything and homework. Um, but I wanted to make sure you realize yours will be very similar to what we're going over now. Here's another example. I called it um, extra practice. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it was not on our um, review sheet. But yours is definitely going to be a trick function. And I thought this might be a good example to consider. So, <clears throat> as normal, associated homogeneous. Y double prime plus 9y is 0. Characteristic equation. R squared plus 9 is 0. I'll isolate the R squared. Negative 9. Square root plus or minus square root of negative 9 or 3i. <clears throat> so our complementary function, e to the ax, so that's e to the 0x again, c1 cosine bx, so cosine 3x plus c2 sine of 3x. But we'll take that to just be c1 cosine 3x plus c2 sine of 3x because of course e to the 0x is 1. <clears throat> okay so then at that point I'm going to bring it up here again. We take our y1 to be cosine 3x and our y2 to be sine of 3x and we calculate the round scan so line up the functions in the first row cosine 3x sine 3x their derivatives in the second row derivative of cosine minus sine same argument don't forget to write the argument so minus 3 sine of 3x so that's what I was talking about earlier and similarly here, we get 3 cosine 3x. Okay, calculate the determinant. Get 3 cosine squared 3x. And let's see, minus a minus makes plus 3 sine squared of 3x. And from that, we can factor out a 3. And we're left with cosine squared 3x plus sine squared 3x and that's our famous Pythagorean identity so we get 3 times 1 or just simply 3 ok so now we're ready for our formula for the particular solution minus y1 integral y2 f over w with respect to x and then plus y2 integral y1 f over w with respect to x and make our substitutions so y sub p is minus y1 y1 was cosine 3x integral y2 that could appear with sine of 3x times the function and again, our function is what's in the differential equation here. In this case, secant squared of 3x. And so times secant squared of 3x all over w is 3.
with respect to x for the first term, and then plus y2, sine of 3x, integral y1, cosine 3x, times again the function, with secant squared of 3x, and all over the Ronskian of 3, and that's with respect to x. Okay, so I'm not going to do very much in this step. Um, just going to kind of clean things up. Maybe bring these threes that are in the denominators out in front. So let's say minus one third cosine three x. And then I'm just going to recopy the integral of sine three x secant squared of three x with respect to x. And then plus again the three that's in the denominator I'll bring out as one third sine of 3x and then the integral of cosine 3x secant squared 3x with respect to x. Okay, so now the identities to try to fit integrable forms because obviously these are neither are integrable. So we get the minus one third cosine 3x changing the sines and cosines typically will work so sine 3x over 1 times okay secant squared is secant is 1 over cosine so secant squared 1 over cosine squared of 3x and then we have plus 1 third sine of 3x integral all right this is cosine 3x over 1 and then times once again change secant squared to a 1 over cosine squared of 3x. Alright, so now let's think about what we need to do. Get the negative 1 third cosine 3x and then the integral of and what we have here is sine times 1 over cosine squared and there's no cancellations, nothing really special happening. But I do know one thing for sure, and that is that sine over cosine is tangent. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this cosine squared up. I'm actually going to write it as 1 over cosine x here, and then times the sine of x over that other factor of cosine. And those are all three x's, I'm sorry. So 1 over cosine 3x and then times sine of 3x over cosine of 3x. And the reason I did that is because I recognized that sine over cosine is tangent. And if I put that over here and change 1 over cosine to its reciprocal, which is secant, I then get an integrable form. So that was the plan. Here we get a nice cancellation. One factor of cosine cancels. So we're left with 1 over cosine of 3x with respect to x. Okay, so now we're almost ready to integrate. Okay, as mentioned, 1 over cosine is secant 3x. Sine over cosine is tangent of 3x. And there's one of the basic six. Because the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So this integrates to be secant. And then we have plus one third sine of 3x integral 1 over cosine is secant 3x. Okay, so now ready to integrate. Minus one third cosine 3x. Okay. Secant tangent integrates to be secant, but because of the argument 3x, we have to modify by 1 third. So 1 third secant of 3x. And then we have plus 1 third sine of 3x. And then we do have a formula for secant of 3x. Again, on your crib notes, here's what I call the useful formulas. If you're going to need one of these at some point with variation of parameters. In this case, the integral of secant 
which is natural log absolute value secant plus tangent. But because of the argument 3x, we modify that by one third. So one third natural log absolute value secant 3x plus tangent 3x. And here, y sub p, I suppose if you left it as minus one ninth cosine 3x secant 3x and then plus one ninth sine of 3x times the natural log absolute value secant 3x plus tangent 3x I would probably give you full credit for that but one thing you should notice is that cosine and secant are reciprocals and so therefore this just becomes minus one ninth times one or minus one ninth and then plus the one ninth sine 3x natural log absolute value secant 3x plus tangent 3x okay so that was extra practice for variation of parameters and this is the end we'll call it quits here that's the end of part three um and we'll come back and we just have two questions left an rc circuit and then an rlc circuit so that'll be part four and we should be finished easily within the 20 minutes or so that we normally take for these videos so we'll see you when you get here